Govadan Echo Village is an award-winning farm community set in a valley surrounded by hills of somewhat unusual shapes. It is located in West India, exactly 108 kilometers by road from Mumbai. This pastoral community is based on the ideal of caring for each other for Mother Earth and for all beings, with the deliberate goal of pleasing the Supreme Being, Lord Sri Krishna. In this Braja, Eva Purnatha, in this transcendental form, Natha, O Natha. So, Natha, there are four kinds of Nathas, there is Badrinath, Jagannath, Ranganath, and Gopalnath. There are so many Nathas, I want this Gopalnath. The course is developed in which the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is taught day-to-day -day basis, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Is this uh, ordinary rice? No, it is organic Jini rice, locally grown in Maharashtra. And uh, this one is grown by whom? The uh, devotees here and the people who are part of our community. Late October is harvest time for the region's rice crops. Devotees work at it in groups with hand and sickle. The grain is then allowed to dry in the sun. Varieties of rice conserve the seeds and Gurukul boys study the varieties. What is the length of the rice pinnacle? What is the height of the rice? They study every characteristics and they keep the record of everything. And with those records, we have found out two varieties which are very good in, in this area. When pests attack on the rice, then what are the organic measures so that pests can be controlled easily. After collection, bundles are tied up and taken to this noisy drum to separate the rice from its base. We grow around 40 different types of vegetables throughout the year, depending on the seasons. Like uh, we have some six types of brinjal, pumpkin, dudi, uh, chilies, tomatoes, cauliflower, broccoli, uh, cabbage, radish, beans, lady's finger, carrots. Over Did 20. you dig this yourself? Uh, it was already there in the stall. We dig it little more and then build this. Uh, we make organic jaggery. We have uh, three acres of sugar can uh, planted uh, organic jaggery also here. This is kandamool. We have to boil this and take it. Sadhu's food it is generally called. It's very healthy, simple, easy to digest. True, the communal kitchen doesn't look like much from outside. But it's fully equipped, efficient and clean. Wood, not gas, is used to cook for Lord Krishna. This is, this is a dry number regime. We have to grind this in a coconut. Oh, yeah. So, land, uh, land purchase of 2004. So, uh, first, first land is a 22 acre only. I see. So 2013, 84, 85 acres. Back in 2004, this started building was standing alone. Today, its ground floor is the farm school. The middle floor serves as an ashram for brahmachari monks, and meals are also served to farm residents.
top floor is the community's temple room. Not for much longer though, first class local stone is just about to be used for a purpose built new structure across the road. When will this be finished? Uh, around uh, March. Five months? Yeah. You think so? Yeah, I think so, mostly. Construction of a magnificent temple is on the way. No wonder the presiding farm deities Sri Sri Gor Nitai are so excited. They've been seen dancing on the altar non-stop ever since hearing the news of a new temple. The landscape theme around the new temple will be the 12 forests of Krishna's childhood pastimes, including a parikram marg taking pilgrims around a duplicate Govardhan hill and along the clean Jamuna river. <laughs> Who says temple, says Goshala. The farm's beloved cows already had their luxury barn built for them. Knowing how dear mother cow is to Krishna, the devotees custom designed several high ceiling sheds for their comfort. So this is the nursery. We have over, uh, 500 uh, different plants, indoor and outdoor plants here. It's huge. These are touch me nods. This is the soil biotechnology sewage water treatment plant. All the water from all over the places like the guest house, Brahmachari Ashram, Goshala, all the solid waste is filtered here. And then after filtration falls into this gravity settling tank. And from here it is pumped on to the sewage treatment plant. This is the water full of soap? No, in the ashram we use the natural uptan that we make out of our cow dung. So as much as possible we are using natural products. And the guest? Even for the guests, we in their rooms, we supply the upten and the dant manjan and encourage them to use instead of the chemical uh, soaps and other things. And, uh, and we have planted food. In various beds, the sewage water is sprayed. So this is like a land simulator. So the water is absorbed and the uh, bacteria at their roots, they also act on the water. Mm. And the whole thing has a slope down. So after passing through all the layers, they get collected at the front. It's a patented technology by a devotee from our community. He has done his PhD studies in IIT Powai. They are collecting flowers for the worship. Oh, so it purifies the water and it produces yes. flowers. The stage below and what are the stones for? The, sto the different layers for the water to pass and get purified. Ah. Does the water get purified to the extent of becoming drinking water again? No, again? no, no, no. We don't use it for drinking but we use it for irrigation. After this crash course on biotechnology and a morning packed with eco-friendly tidbits, it's time for an hour's rest at the farm's brand new guest house. Rooms are spacious and so well ventilated you won't even notice the absence of air conditioning. Simple living and high ceiling.
a knock on the door at midday invites me for lunch. A minute walk past the little shrine to Hanumanji, step under the tall thatched roof of the gazebo and sit down for dinner in another high ceiling AC. Outside the Prasadam Hall, workers are busy tending the herb garden. Ayurvedic remedies are made with these herbs and a small clinic offers a hygienic room for treatments and a state-of-the-art massage bed for deep relaxation. My guide takes me now to the green building project, which principle is to minimize the use of cement and chemical products in housing. The whole the wall is made of mud, hay, it's all stamped and yeah. then mixed and then applied on by hand. So it's like this thick wall. And here? This is a fire chamber for the winter. Is there cow dung involved? In yeah, in the clustering is a cow dung water and the red mud also, the local soil. There is no fevicol or anything in this. I it's see. natural. The guest house behind me. So the technique used is compressed stabilized earth blocks. Compression gives the strength and then the stabilization is achieved by adding cement which is less than 5 to 10 percent of the total content. Each block is comprised of local soil and uh, quarry dust. And this is such uh, a straw bell housing. Yeah. Here we can clearly see the contents. The how mud, uh, straw and lime and uh, quarry dust all these things are put together. The lifetime of these walls is more than 200 years. And the lifetime of the building that we saw, the guest house, that is around 100 to 120 years. And of a regular concrete building, which is entirely made with cement, is something like 70, 80 years. We are utilizing this place for the school trips and other college students to showcase how we have built these cottages. So for different workshops on mud house making, so we will we'll get the kids to make the wall, so that they will get an experience of how, may, how to make a mud house natural. What else? A swimming pool? It's so hot. This has got to be my next visit. Would you believe this? A real pool, Arrivo. like in the West. Ah. I say this farm is definitely up to scratch.